Hello, welcome. Let us look at these two figures. The first figure shows a circle, so completely, circum, uh, completely circumscribed by a square, and the sphere is completely circumscribed by a cube. Here, the diameter of the circle is equal to the side of the cube, of side of the square, and the diameter of the diameter of the sphere is equal to the, the side of the cube. Basically, the observation is the radius a, and the, uh, the relation between the half diagonal of the square or the cube and the radius of the circle or sphere is given by d by 2 is equal to a times square root of d. For example, in, this, in, the, in the two dimensional case, it is a root 2 and in the three dimensional case, it is a times root 3. And as d becomes larger uh, and for high dimensional uh, hypercube and sphere, the relation is d by 2 is equal to a times square root of d. So the theorem is that, that the majority of the volume of a hypercube lies in the corners as the dimension d increases. That is, as d becomes larger and larger, the difference between the length of the half diagonal and the radius becomes very large. That is, the length of the half diagonal is too large, is a very large compared to the of radius. In the next section, I will demonstrate the mathematical proof for this theorem. Hello, welcome. In this short video, I will derive the following expression. That is, limit, limit d tends to infinity vd by vc equal to 0, where vd is the volume VD is the volume of a sphere in D dimensions. And VC is the volume of a hypercube. The dimensions of these uh, objects are the sphere has a diameter of 2a and the hypercube has a side equal to 2a. So, the diameter and the side are equal. In the previous video, we learned that the volume of a sphere of d dimensions is given by sd by d multiplied by the a, the multiplied by the factor a power d, where a is the radius of the sphere. And we also know that sd is given by 2 into pi power d by 2 by gamma of d by 2. And next, the volume of the hypercube is given by 2a power d. So, if you remember, for a three-dimensional cube, uh, the volume is simply q, the side power 3. So, for a d-dimensional or hyperdimensional cube, that is a hypercube, the volume is given by 2a power d, where 2a is the side. So, now, let us start with the left-hand side of our expression. limit d tends to infinity. By inserting the value for vd, we have 2 pi, 2 times pi power d by 2 by gamma of d by 2 multiplied by a power d by d multiplied by 1 by 2a power d. This becomes limit d tends to infinity 2 times pi power d by 2 by gamma of d by 2 into 1 by d times 2 power d. Now, by using the Stirling's formula, gamma of x plus 1 is approximately equal to 2 pi power 1 by 2 e power minus x, x power x plus 1 by 2. This is for x very much larger than 1. So, in this kind of limiting case, this is definitely valid. So, for a gamma of d by 2 is equal to gamma of d by 2 minus 1 plus 1. And now, by using this formula directly, we have the approximation equals 2 pi power 1 by 2 e power minus d by 2 plus 1. And this is d by 2 minus 1 
power d by 2 minus 1 plus 1 by 2 that is minus 1 by 2. So, now inserting this value in the expression for gamma gamma of d by 2 we get limit d tends to infinity pi power d by 2 divided by 2 power d minus 1 d times 2 power 1 by 2 multiplied by e power minus d by 2 plus 1 and then we have d minus 2 by 2 power d minus 1 by 2 which is equal to limit d tends to infinity by rewriting power, pi power d by 2 we have d minus 1 by 2 multiplied by pi power 1 by 2 and then we have the pi by pi power 1 by 2 from here so that is square root of pi then we have d 2 and then we have 2 power d minus 1 plus 1 by 2 and then we have d multiplied by e power d minus 1 by 2 and then d minus 2 by 2 power d minus 1 by 2. So, continuing with this, so the limit becomes limit d tends to infinity 1 by, by grouping the terms that has d minus 1 by 2 as the exponent, we have d minus 2 by 2 times pi times e power d minus 1 by 2. And the rest of the terms are 2 power d minus 1 by 2 d 1 multiplied by square root of e. So, now by, by evaluating the well, evaluating this fraction at the limit, we get 1 by infinity. Since all the factors are in positive, positive function of or all the factors have a positive exponent of d and and at d equal to infinity, all the values are basically infinity. Hence, the product is infinity and the limit is 1 by infinity that is equal to 0. That is, hence, we have limit d tends to infinity, the volume of a sphere or volume of a hypercube of d dimensions is equal to 0. So, this basically means that at very high dimensions, the volume of a sphere is negligible compared to the volume of a hypercube. In other words, most of the volume in a hypercube lies in the corners of the hypercube as opposed to the volume within the sphere. Thanks for watching.